inside 10. Garner will let it go. He almost lost it. Garner has to let it rip. Vaughn put it up and in with one run to go. David Vaughn with the putback. Song yet. She's humming like hell, but she hadn't sung yet. Championship is sponsored by Motorola Pagers for the messages you can't afford to miss. Those to a championship tonight. The UCLA Bruins are looking to capture their first national title in 20 years. But standing in their way, the Arkansas Razorbacks who seek to retain the coveted crown they captured in Charlotte one year ago. A sellout crowd of 38,000 is filling in to filing in to witness a national championship game that has all the making of a classic. The Razorbacks and the Bruins will tip it off in just about a half an hour from now. Hi again, everybody. I'm Pat O'Brien along with Dr. Quinn, basketball man, and Coach K, Mike Krzyzewski, and this is the prize Arkansas and UCLA will be playing for tonight. And Coach, you got to look at this and get some goosebumps, huh? I get really emotional, a lot of goosebumps, and I think of the coaches. I think of Nolan Richardson, one last step to make it two in a row. And I think of Jim Herrick. When he goes back to UCLA, he doesn't want to just see 10 other trophies. He wants to see one of his own. And Quinn, you were responsible for one of these as well from a player's standpoint. The bump right, the right now, you're a little anxious, you know, but you're ready to go. The, once the ball goes up, you're ready to play really well. The most important thing is you remember all of your life the hard work, the relationships made here. This is an exciting time that we should see a heck of a game. All right, guys, nice to see you tonight. A couple of question marks and stories uh, floating around here tonight. For the Bruins, the status of their little general, the Swift senior point guard, Tyus Edney, there you see him nursing that right wrist. He's walking uh, to work today with a, a uh, machine on it to stimulate the muscles. There's the attempted block shot against Randy Rutherford against Oklahoma State. That's when he sprained his right wrist. And while the Bruins were here yesterday, Edney was being examined over at the University of Washington. An x-ray yesterday was negative, and Edney will start tonight. But what does that do to his shooting or his passing? I think more importantly, it's the ball handling you have to worry about. Right-handed, you've got to be able to get the ball back up quickly. You have to remember, Arkansas is a team that traps and press. They come at you hard. So I'm more worried about ball handling and passing. Those are the two keys for him. All right, Quinn. A short time ago, you spoke with Bruins head coach Jim Herrick about Edney's condition. Here's how that went. Coach Eric, as you get prepared to go for the national championship, can you give us the status of Tyrus Edney? Well, I think his uh, wrist is a little sore, but he'll play. You, you think it's going to affect his play at all? He's a pretty tough kid. Well, be, he's a tough kid. It, we'll see how, you know, you don't know that how it will affect him. 
You'll have to just wait till the game starts, wait till he warms up and loosens up and see how it feels. All right, good luck to you tonight. Okay, Quinn, thank you. So Cameron Dollar becomes a player tonight. Well, Cameron Dollar is important because you need somebody to come off the bench because I think he's going to have to be able to handle the ball. They've had pressure like this before with Arizona State, but Arkansas comes at you 40 minutes. Mike, everybody's talking about this tonight. Is this a big deal, or are we just making this into something? No, this is a big deal because they're going to have to beat traps, and Edney's going to give up the ball, and I think they're going to have to have Cameron Dollar in with him uh, a lot during the ball game. Uh, the Racerbacks are going to try to get the ball out of Edney's hands. There's no question about it. I'm anxious to see how many times Edney will actually be the guy who brings the ball across half court. I think if he brings it across a lot, UCLA wins. If he doesn't, I think the Razorbacks win. Interesting story. And Arkansas also has a starting senior guard. He missed practice yesterday for medical reasons. Corey Beck skipped the workout because of recurrence of his asthma problems. It also plagued him on the eve of last year's title game. Now, a short time ago, Michelle Tafoya spoke with the head hog, Nolan Richardson, about repeating. Coach, you come in with the opportunity tonight to repeat as national champs. The old adage is it's always tougher to repeat. Has that been the case up to now? Well, you know, it's been very difficult simply because, uh, you know, you're on the top. You don't have anywhere to go. And uh, I'm just very proud and very uh, proud of our kids because here we are in the final game. And uh, it's up to us now to, to, to repeat or, or not to repeat. Uh, some question marks about the condition of Ty Sedney's wrist. How will you test that or exploit that situation? Well, I, I don't think it's going to be that uh, type of situation where it's something that he can't play or do anything. You know, last year at this time, this is Cherry Key's knee. So, uh, I mean, we got some kids that are hurt, too. But uh, in a game like this, you, you can forget about the uh, knick-knack injuries. It has come to play. I mean, that's something that's built up more by the media than, than actually the kid themselves. At the risk of getting away from the event at hand, we wanted to give you the opportunity to respond to some of the rumors circulating and reports that you might be entertaining the NBA, in particular the Toronto Raptors, after tonight. Well, I, you know, I, this is when they told me about that today in the hotel room. I, I, I said to the, my SID, people seem to know more about Nolan and his business than he does because I, I, don't, I don't know where that came from, and I have never uh, visited with anyone about it. So, uh, uh, so my response to that is that I don't know anything about it. Best of luck, Coach. Thanks. Thank you UCLA very much. UCLA has just come onto the floor here at the King Dome, and their fans are screaming and shouting at them and no doubt looking for Tyus Edney to see how he's handling that right wrist. That is the story tonight, as far as the Bruins are concerned. And now Arkansas on the floor here in the Dome. And Mike Krzyzewski, an expert at rumors yourself here, what does that do to the team to have this floating around about uh, well, Nolan Richardson? Yeah, Pat, one, one distraction is one too many. And I think Nolan Richardson, with his experience in being in a championship game, will really put that to rest, and he won't let it bother him. He's in the locker room now. He'll be out later. But the teams and the bands are here. We're a little ways from tip-off for the championship game. Still ahead, we'll talk live with UCLA's legendary coach, John Wooden. And next, we'll take you behind the scenes with the defending national champion, Arkansas Razorbacks, as prelude to a championship rolls on after a message and a word from your very own local station. Be there. Prelude to a Championship is sponsored by Honda, building quality automobiles in America for the past 12 years. Welcome back to the Kingdom. There's a little bit of a buzz in the building because the UCLA Bruins have entered the court without their catalyst, Tyus Edney. Let's go down to Michelle Tafoya. Michelle? Well, Pat, the word out of the UCLA locker room is that the condition of Ty Sedney is much more serious than people anticipated. He was in a full cast for the last 24 hours. They've since taken him out of that cast and put him in something a little bit more flexible. They brought a basketball into the locker room a few minutes ago to see how he would handle the ball. Uh, no one was allowed to watch that except for the coaches. The tension in the UCLA locker room has been extremely high, and Tyus has been in a great deal of pain. Pat? All right, Michelle, thank you very much. What about that development? Yeah, this development is something that I was became familiar with. What I believe he has is a displacement of the navicular bone, and they have been worried about it. They had him in a cast not only last night, they had him in a cast the night before, and it was the first time today that they tried to get a chance to see if he could dribble a basketball. I suspect he could not do it well enough so far for them to let him to come out. The coaching staff was concerned about that earlier this afternoon. I got to think you got to move on at this point, right, no, Coach, you, quickly? Yeah, you got to move on, and... Uh, 
Uh, Tyus is going to be the guy who has to make that decision as to what he can do. And if my belief is that that kid will come out and do the very best he can. But Cameron Dowler becomes more and more important. Money tonight. Yeah. Ever since they downed North Carolina in Saturday night's second national semifinal, the Razorbacks have been busy, and so have their fans as they all try to make themselves feel at home on the road. At the Arkansas Team Hotel Saturday night, fans were still singing after the win over Carolina. Meantime, upstairs in Corliss Williamson's room. President Clinton, you should have been here, but I'm a party for you. Don't worry about it. We got you there. When friends and family finally left, the Arkansas star relaxed with a midnight matinee. UCLA made it to the small screen yesterday as Arkansas's assistants looked for weaknesses in UCLA's zone defense. I could see them playing us some zone, but I don't think they'll be that kind of a zone. You know what I mean? I don't think it's like much longer. You know what as the coaches studied the Bruins, the second most anticipated matchup took place between sharpshooter Scotty Thurman and his father Lavelle. I like that word mo. Give me In dominoes of all things. Yeah, I'll be hard to hell. Right there, come on. I think I got him now. Oh, ten, that'll do it. <laughs> and Arkansas wants no domino theory tonight. Uh, they want to repeat. We spent two weeks looking at Corliss Williamson. Show us something that you like about him. Well, Corliss Williamson. What's not to like, by the way? Well, there's, yeah. you, you got to like everything about him. Let's take a look at him. He circled in the low post. Watch him follow the ball from side to side. Then what happens is he rests for a while. Now, all of a sudden, the ball comes to his side, and he gets position. He gets a piece of the paint. And watch him change speed. And he goes right past the North Carolina player for a bucket. He can't be stopped in the post. He, and there he is live. You can see his numbers there. And he is their big man inside. What would a trip to the Emerald City be without a wizard? John Wooden when we come back. Westwood himself. Hall of Fame coach John Wooden, who led the Bruins to 10 national titles in 12 years. And coach, I know you don't come to a lot of these. Welcome. And how does it feel to be back to a championship game? Well, it's wonderful uh, because of UCLA being here. And I, naturally, I'd feel much better uh, if they were at full strength. They're a lot louder now than they used to be. So I'm going to put this microphone right here. Have you heard that us talking about the Tyus Edney story? This has to be disturbing to you that there's a possibility that he won't be at 100% tonight. Well, that worries me, yes, very much. Uh, I felt it might, our chances depend upon uh, Tyus being really healthy because he's our catalyst. There's no question about that. And if he isn't able to penetrate and get in there like I know he's capable of doing, we all know now, it, it'll make it much more difficult for us. But here's two teams playing for the national championship, and they have to be pretty good or they wouldn't be here. So if you got an opportunity to say something to Coach Harris, what would be the one thing you'd want him to concentrate on going into this game? Remember what got you here, and don't get carried away with anything extra. Just try to uh, uh, let your players think. It, it's not the same as another game, but that's what you want your players to feel, that it, it's, it's just another ball game. Play your game. Coach, uh, Jim Herrick's been so outspoken about your support of him and your relationship with him. Is there even a little bit more of a special feeling, not just with UCLA being in here, but what Jim Herrick has done over the last few years to bring back the glory of UCLA. Uh, Mike, I would have the same support for any of the coaches that have succeeded me. But yes, it, it, it is special. I've known Jim for many, many years and I uh, uh, feel that he's done a good job. And of course, as you well know, we all get criticism. It, it doesn't make <laughs> a any difference how well you do, you get criticism. Coach, uh, do any of the, the, does this team actually realize and understand the kind of history you put up there in the rafters at UCLA? I don't know why they should. That was 20 years ago. Really? And, uh, they're out to establish something on their own, and that's exactly the way that it should be. I can think back, and yeah, it was pleasant, and uh, we did well, but 
They shouldn't try to live on that. They're, they're established their own identity. I think you'd put it, if you won 10 championships, I think it'd be more than pleasant that we did well, don't you think? Coach, uh, uh, you and Coach K have each had players who could go up in the air. But when it comes to hang time, we found somebody right here in Seattle who gives new meaning to the phrase playing above the rim. Look up there by the Space Needle, a Seattle landmark that was built in 1962, and standing out there is Halo Man <laughs> live. And uh, Halo Man, um, I have one word for you. Why? <laughs> because it's the NCAA, and this is March Madness. Well, I guess it's April Insanity now, so here I am, He's NCAA. How you doing, Pat? Fine, Halo Man. He's 520 feet above sea level there, and... Uh, what do you why do you go up there uh, wh why do, what do you do this for halo man I'm the light bulb guy I'm the ritter <laughs> of dim bulbs everywhere and that's my job in all honesty that's exactly what he does and here he is earlier he changes the light bulbs folks uh, at the needle and he became an attraction up there and now he does this for fun I suggest to you young people at home that this should not be tried even on your porch, right, Coach Wooden? We don't want people getting in trouble for this. Halo Man, have you ever had any slips or falls? No, I guess you I haven't because you're standing there. <laughs> All right, Halo Man, over your left shoulder there is the dome. Wave goodbye to us and thanks for joining us. Okay. There he is, the Halo Man. <laughs> uh, again, too much time on our hands. But that's, uh, how do you see tonight's game, uh, Coach? Two teams that got to the championship game are good. They have to be good, and it could go either way. I'm a little bit worried now with Edney not being at top strength, but still, they're playing for the national championship. They don't need anything extra to be inspired, and it should be a fine ball game. You got a good seat? Well, I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> I think you'll have a good seat. Thank, Thank you. you so much for gracing our set. Thanks for joining us. And uh, at halftime, uh, we'll speak live uh, with Arkansas's number one fan, President Clinton. So we've had a king and a president. Uh, Coach K, final thoughts here before the game. Well, I think that it's uh, it's going to be if Arkansas can get the ball out of Edney's hands, and if somebody's got to step up for UCLA as far as handling that basketball. I think you're looking at the two best teams in college basketball. We've talked about the parity. It's here. Obvious concern with Edney out of the game. Cameron Dollar's got to step up and big. Well, you have the number one team in the country and the defending national champions, and you look around the building, and there was a tremendous buzz in here tonight. Expectations of a tremendous game, right, Clay? And I expect it to be that. And you do too, Coach? Oh, undoubtedly. And we must remember, the defense usually wins championships. And even without Edney, Dollar is an outstanding defensive player, and we won't be hurt defensively very much. All right. Despite what we say, they still play the game, don't they? So coming up, Jim Nance and Billy Packer with a national championship game right here on CBS. We'll see you at halftime with the president. Prelude to a Championship has been sponsored by Honda, who invites you to test drive the new Odyssey, the Honda of minivans.
the crowning of the national champion from the kingdom in the emerald city of seattle welcome to the final step arkansas and ucla hi everybody jim nance with you arkansas last year's national champions facing ucla which closed out the regular season ranked number one the Bruins trying to hang an 11th banner at Pauley Pavilion. Meanwhile, it's Arkansas trying to join an elite group of programs that have won back-to-back -back titles, including Duke in this decade and in the magnificent run of the Wizard of UCLA some 20 years back. Billy Packer alongside, and the breaking story here is Tyus Edney. He came out for warm-ups a little bit earlier, just a stretch, really, but we did not see him handle the ball or shoot, Billy. Tell us what your read is on this situation right now. Well, Jim, I watched him uh, on the lay layups working out. He did not come out and take any shots, as you said, in the stretching exercise. He put very little uh, pressure on his hands at all. I think that they're in serious trouble at that position, and, of course, if that's the case, Cameron Dollar, who has filled in this year for him on one occasion in which they won against Southern Cal. But you can see a great differential there between their stats. But even more importantly, we talk about the whole psychology of this game. Tyus Edney has been one of the key players in this NCAA tournament. Uh, no question. Maybe the most outstanding player in the tournament. Up to this point. Up to this point. But when you talk about Arkansas, boy, are they loaded and deep. The Bruins really have only been playing seven players all season long when they're healthy. But without Edney or with Edney limited tonight, they will face 94 feet of hell from the Arkansas pressure. Well, you can see right here a 2-2-1, two -two a full court pressure. They press the ball, try to drive it up the sidelines, get it in a good double team position. At that point, the defense becomes the offense for Arkansas. Great hit ahead passing. Then you see it down to Corliss Williamson, a big man that can really run the floor, and they finish off beautifully. Here well, comes Tyus Edney. He's coming out this time. But Jimmy dribbled the ball only with his left hand. I haven't seen him put it in his right hand yet. Well, UCLA, can they find 94 feet of heaven in this matchup? What they do so well is get on the break. But again, Edney will be missing. Watch this play right here. A block by Ed O'Bannon. After the block, the team takes off. All five on the move. They fill the lane. There's the hit ahead to Edney. Cross-court passing. Charles O'Bannon up for the shot. They love to get on the run, but can they do it without that key point guard? And here is Tyus. Let's see if he can catch and put it away. He shot that ball with his that, left hand. That's the first time we've seen him take a shot all night. Went up with the left hand. We'll be back with the lineups in a moment. CBS Sports coverage of the 1995 NCAA Men's Basketball National Championship game is sponsored by Chevrolet Trucks. Nike, who encourages you to participate in the lives of America's youth. And by Bud Light. For great taste, make it a Bud Light. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Kingdome in Seattle for tonight's national championship game between the Arkansas Razorbacks and the UCLA Bruins. Now, let's meet the starting lineups. For Arkansas, at forward is 6'7", junior from Russellville, Arkansas, number 34, Corliss Williamson. <laughs> Six eight senior from Lakewood, California, number thirty one, Ed O'Bannon. For Arkansas and forward, a six six junior from Ruston, Louisiana, number thirty, Scotty Thurman. For UCLA and forward, a six six sophomore from Lakewood, California, number thirteen, Charles O'Bannon. For Arkansas at center, a 6'8 senior from Memphis, Tennessee, number 40, Elmer Martin. For UCLA at center, a 7-foot senior from Prague in the Czech Republic, number 25, George Zedek. For Arkansas at guard, a 6'4 senior from Tulsa, Oklahoma, number 12, Clint McDaniel. For UCLA, a guard, a 6'5", freshman from Los Angeles, California, number 12, Toby Bailey. For Arkansas, a guard, a 6'2", senior from Memphis, Tennessee, number 14, Corey Beck. And for UCLA, a guard, a 5'10", senior from Long Beach, California, number 11, Tyus Edney. 
and the coaches for Arkansas in his 10th season, Nolan Richardson. For UCLA in his 7th season, Jim Harry. Well, no hand slaps from the Bruins for Tyus Edney when he was introduced, but Billy Packer, let's go through your checklist. What to look for tonight? MVP numbers, and I'm talking about Corliss Williamson. 23 points, 10 rebounds, 60%. That's what he's done in the tournament. Has a chance to be a repeat. MOP, most outstanding player. Family affair, the O'Bannon brothers. Tremendous job in this tournament. 29 points, 12 rebounds. They could come back and really help in this ball game. They need to pick it up today. Press or not to press. Arkansas steals against UCLA turnovers. If Edney can't go 100%, that could be a big advantage for Arkansas, obviously. The bench. And in this particular case, Arkansas, a huge advantage. They're outscoring their opponents 138 to 45, and the Bruins bench is reduced if Edney can't go. Calling the championship game, the officials, Jim Burr, Ted Valentine, John K. Hill with the alternate Bob Donato. Congratulations to that group for making it to the last game. Jim, we have with us tonight, of course, Coach John Wooden. His first national championship was 64. In that game, Fred Slaughter was down a little bit, and a guy by the name of Kenny Washington came off the bench, scored 26 points, and had 11 rebounds. So you never know what can happen in a magic moment like this. Well, Edney's taken the brace off. His right wrist heavily taped. I think we're going to get an indication early because obviously either McDaniel or Beck are going to go right after him when he handles that ball in the dribble. Underway and Edney with the left hand over to Bailey in the corner. O'Bannon Bruins with a three. Well, he's had a game with seven, so he's off to a good start. Quick whistle and Zedek holding on to Williamson down the block. As Zedek and J.R. Henderson picked up eight fouls trying to take care of Big Country. That's a little quicker foul than Jim Herrick would have liked. Williamson outside, starting to develop that outside shot, Billy. We've seen it right here in this tournament in the Midwest Regional and at the Final Four. There's that 2-2-1 two, two, press we talked about. Over the top. Bailey inside the free throw line, banks it down. Beautiful job against the press. Not one time did they put the ball on the floor and try to dribble through it. Passed over the top. Doubling down by Edney. Williamson gets it again. What a rejection. That time by Charles O'Bannon, Arkansas basketball. Jim, we're going to see some of the best long-armed, quick athletes that there is in college basketball. Scotty Thurman. The rainbow doesn't fall, but Martin saves it. He had Williamson wide open inside, missed him. Now they drop back in the 2-3 zone. McDaniel driving on Edney. Scoop shot blocked by Charles O'Bannon. Elmer Martin undefeated as a starter this year. 14 and 0. He's considered their good luck charm. Won't play that many minutes though. They showed a little two-three zone. Now back to man to man. Thurman lost the handle. Here come the Bruins with Bailey ahead. Bailey lost control and Martin fields it. Both teams wanting to push the ball, Jim. Here's Martin. He made one Saturday and today as well. That's but that good luck charm bonus. Not only getting in the, the starting lineup as a token, but burying two threes. Oh, there's Edney. Almost lost that ball on the catch. And obviously can't dribble with the right hand. Cannot take it to the right nope. side. Showing a lot of guts out here. Still able to draw the foul, though, the hand check on Corey Beck. You can see he tried to cross over dribble and didn't have the right hand to make the power move. Normally, he'd blow by with that crossover dribble. So you know this, too, Billy. He'll have no jump shot. No. I'm surprised that Daniels guard. Last touch, Bailey. Arkansas ball. 
Jim, I think of another major matchup, Cincinnati-Ohio State, 1962. Jerry Lucas went down in the semifinal game, really changed the complexion of that championship with Cincinnati won. Nice defense by Zinnick, stayed with him. McDaniel three, and Arkansas is knocked down two of them. 8-5, Hogs, and a steal. They take it away from Edney, and Beck puts it in for two more. Jim, I think Jim Herrick, and he did make the move right away. I think he has seen enough. He's got to go with Cameron. Oh, Bannon, layup in and out, blocked from behind, and Beck was on the line. UCLA ball, and we'll see now Cameron Dollar coming in for Tyus Edney. Dollar, a 6-1 sophomore from Atlanta, Georgia, coached by his father in high school has a brother, Chad, who played at Clemson this year. Jim, I was thinking the same thing that Jim Herrick had to be thinking. He saw it is. Pickpocket right away on Dollar, and McDaniel lays it in. And boy, now you're going to see Arkansas go for the kill. Charles O'Bannon underneath, and last touch by Beck. We talked about in the top of the show, 94 feet of hell or 94 feet of heaven. Without Edney in the game, that hell is really going to come on now. Zedek straight by McDaniel. Beck waits for Thurman to fire the three. Rattles out. Dollar ahead. Bailey, though, will keep it on the right wing. Now it comes back to Dollar. Underneath to Ed O'Bannon. That pass was intended for Charles O'Bannon. He ought to get an assist on that on the touch. That breaks an Arkansas 10-point run. Now let's see what UCLA has made of in terms of coming back. Well, no their come. leader's gone. Dollar pull-up jumper. Charles. Beautiful. Arkansas in transition. McDaniel ahead and Ed O'Bannon on his back. Charles O'Bannon coming off the great game against Oak State. That he had on Saturday, played 37 minutes, 7 for 9, 19 points, 6 rebounds, and there is a young man who you know has to be heartbroken right now. He tried, Jim, but you could tell that two or three times up the floor, he just couldn't do it. There's no chance. McDaniel hit clutch free throws in the end against North Carolina. McDaniel grew up in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Good. And worship the Golden Hurricane when it was coached by Nolan Richardson, who just dreamed the one day play for him. Not so only over to Fayetteville. Right, not only four for four against North Carolina, that now makes him 17 for 19 in the NCAA tournament. Arkansas really with a five-point lead. UCLA easily breaks the pressure that time, and that'll send Charles O'Bannon to the line. Now we have seen one coaching move already. Jim Herrick forced to change his point guard situation. Now, how will Nolan adjust on his part? Does he go after them even further? Or does he go ahead and not give UCLA a chance to play in the open court where they're so successful? Charles O'Bannon. He saying yesterday, we're a close-knit family. We feel it is us against the world. No one thinks we can achieve what we believe we can achieve. And we just use that as a small motivation and helping us achieve our goals. Dollar staying back here on deck, but you can't press with one man. Arkansas adjusts nicely. Williamson for two more. We saw him go around Rasheed Wallace with that same drop step move on Saturday. Comes right back with it again. Bailey helping out, breaking the press. Zedek banks it home. Team shooting extremely well early, Jim. What has gotten them here is excellent defensive pressure. Traveling. Clint McDaniel has scored seven points. Corliss Williamson with two baskets. One from the outside, this one underneath. And the Hogs have the early edge. Back in Seattle, as Tyus Edney came off the court,
short moments ago, the trainer, Tony Spino, offered him a hot pad for his wrist. He turned it down. He's been clenching and opening his fist, trying to get some looseness, but obviously he is very disappointed. He's been trying to even clap his hands for his teammates and can't do that. Let's send it back to Jim and Billy. Already UCLA has turned it over five times in 10 possessions. The more they try to beat that press with the dribble, Jim, the more trouble they're going to be in. They've got to go over the top with passing. Bailey, the freshman, made a nice penetration move, but couldn't finish it. And Ed O'Bannon almost took it away. You have a tendency to underestimate how long those arms are of Ed O'Bannon, how quick he is. But Martin coming up with another big play. He gets an amazing play from a starter who is almost as a sub, Jim, but does the job. Travel that time. Nolan, Nolan puts his head down. He's thinking about how much longer do I leave Martin in the game? Stewart's about ready on that sideline. Dollar against McDaniel. McDaniel, one of the top defensive guards in the country. And last touch by Beck. Now, what's so difficult for UCLA here is when you have a Taya Sedney, he sets up your offense by dribble penetration. Dollar not capable of doing that against McDaniel, so it's hard for them to get into their normal offensive pattern. Bailey, no whistle. Ball loose. Martin runs it down. Second straight rebound for Martin. Get pass to McDaniel. Arkansas not going to forget Williamson in the first half like they did against Oak State. Look at him getting position on Zedek inside. He had position. Yep. They couldn't get it to him. Well, Martin not the guy to feed. See, because you can lay off Martin. Foul on Dollar. Jim, it's never good to try to have your weakest shooter feeding the postman because his defensive player can drop back inside and double down on Corliss Williamson. So it's good to have a guy like Scotty Thurman making the pass. You lay off Scotty. He's the record holder for threes. He'll bury it. Martin's already made one. That one too strong. Toby Bailey, freshman, would have to come up big here tonight with the absence of Edney without UCLA question. to have a chance. And Jim, in 1971, when UCLA built, beat Villanova for the championship, eight of the ten players that started that game played all 40 minutes. Tonight, there are going to be some UCLA players out there that have to start thinking about that. And as I said, Stewart comes up off the bench. So they just go to that bench, which has been so productive. Arkansas empty on its last five trips. Make it six. And on the back, Martin collects his second. He'll go out now. Martin, a high school teammate at Fairley High School in Memphis of Corey Beck and the man who replaces him, Dwight Stewart. All three of them played high school ball together and now closing out their college careers as seniors this evening. And, of course, got here by winning against Memphis in Memphis. In overtime. They well, can't the city, right? They can't the city. Yeah. Back to Dollar. Wrap around pass. No one there. Well, you've got to think who you're throwing it to. Zidic can do a lot of things, but he's not going to be that gifted on a short interior pass. Score stuck on 16-12 for a while. Scotty Thurman hadn't gotten into the offense. They're going to call that on Beck for pushing off on Dollar. And that's the second on Beck. It's a big whistle there because yes, uh, Dollar already had one also. You remember Corey Beck in that Memphis game against Chris Garner got in all kinds of foul trouble. And one of the things we were looking forward to tonight regard to a potential matchup with Edney. Already within three of their tournament average in turnovers. Oh, Bannon. Able to get it flat footed back. And McDaniel reached in. Arkansas is going to send in a sub. Another senior, 6'1", Alex Dillard, long-range specialist. 
Uh, what Dillard does, of course, is keep Beck out of foul trouble, but it will also extend the defense, which gives Corliss Williamson more room to operate inside. And now UCLA brings in J.R. Henderson, a freshman. And, and Jim Dillard has been very interesting in the tournament. Against Memphis, in 17 minutes, he scored 19 points with four threes. But against UNC, he was never 0 for 5. Part of that contingent in the first half of that game that really took Arkansas out of their offense. Let's see what he does tonight because he's so explosive. Up, Eddie O'Bannon will shoot one more. The first team All-America this year, joining Joe Smith, Sean Respert, Damon Stoudemire, and Jerry Stackhouse. O'Bannon and Stoudemire shared Player of the Year honors in the Pac-10. UCLA doing a nice job, dropping back, picking up strictly in the half court. Stewart, who had such an outstanding game in the semifinals. Diller, a little too high off the glass. Good breakthrough by Dollar. Zedek, outside, Zedek, the old roommate of Tyus Edney. He credits Edney for his career lasting so long at UCLA. He was ready to give it up after two years, but Edney told him to stay. Good things would come. Great play by Charles O'Bannon. And ahead they go, Ed to Charles, to Ed. Jim, that's what I mentioned about Nolan Richardson maybe having to make a decision. Without Edney in there, he may be able to play these guys half court at a time. Where UCLA scores is when they can get into that 94 feet of heaven. Stewart, reverse. Nice move by the big man. You talked about Edney being the guy that kept Zidick in school at UCLA. How about the fact that Corey Beck is the guy that talked Nolan Richardson into bringing Stewart along? The point guards were thinking even when they weren't playing. There's McDaniel with a second steal tonight. Three on two. Dillard. Smart defense by Charles O'Bannon. He wouldn't give him the jump shot, made him put it on the floor. And a three-second violation on the Hawks. Arkansas went almost four minutes without a field goal, and it's 18-17 Razorbacks. Game 94 feet of heaven. Now watch how UCLA creates their offense off the defense. The ball goes into Corliss. We have five men in this play, but they will all take off on the break, and Cameron Dollar will start it. And once he starts it, watch this team operate. Five men on the break. Even Zedek traveling. One brother back to the other brother. They score. Excellent transition game on offense. 18-17, Arkansas. The dollar cannot break him down with his dribble, however. Henderson blocked by Darnell Robinson, who enters the game. Davor Remots, number 22, also into the Razorback lineup. Meanwhile, Toby Bailey has come back. Henderson. Henderson kept it alive, but now it comes to Clint McDaniel. Only one starter on the floor right now, Jim, for Arkansas. So remember, with that depth, they can wear people down. And there's the starter with the ball, McDaniel. Even Big Country Reeves said, I got tired in the game against UCLA. You can imagine what it would be like in this game. Ten on the shot clock. They're not worried about Robinson doubling down as much as they were. Robin Williamson have to put it up. Nope. Great defense by UCLA. Well, you go again to that bench, which Nolan Richardson has showed us time and time again that he has so much confidence in various lineups. Give him a lot of credit for that. Well, look, Arkansas has eight turnovers as well. We've been tracking the Bruins, but Arkansas also sloppy here early. Little zone defense trapping out of the zone. Charles O'Bannon. Nice job by Robinson, although his feet still hurt him, and he only is about 60% as far as his ability to run. Did a good job on defense there. Kingdome, Seattle, the 63rd game of the 1995 tournament. This one for the crown. Jim Nance and Billy Packer, Arkansas and UCLA midway through the first half. Darnell Robinson. That gives Arkansas a three-point lead, 2017. 
We saw Robinson and Wilson, the twin towers of Arkansas, in the game on Saturday. Expect to see it again today, both of them being very productive in the tournament. Ed O'Bannon off the glass like John Wood loved it. Terrific job. He looked for the pass as well as the shot. You're exactly right, Jim. That was vintage Wood, the jumper off the board. Always use the glass. Yep. McDaniel hacked on the way in. They say actually with the body, Henderson, J.R. Henderson, freshman who in his second college game hit two free throws with six tenths of a second left to beat Kentucky. And now Zedek comes in for Charles O'Bannon. Ben McDaniel shooting two. Jim, we start talking about straight NCAA wins. Arkansas tonight with 11. The Bruins under Wooden at one time won 38 straight NCAA tournament games. You have to remember back in some of those years, obviously, they only played four games for the national championship. McDaniel has eight of Arkansas's 21 total. Nolan Richardson doesn't go full court pressure. Now he traps out of the half court zone. Really moving those feet. This is what gave North Carolina so much trouble in the second half. In to Zedek. Dollar thought about a three. Gives it up now. Zedek off balance. Remots tips that, it to himself. That and was, stolen by Ed O'Bannon. Boy, he's been reading that all night. Finally got one. Bailey had it on his hip. Now off the glass. Well, Saturday we talked about the freshman factor. Would they be phased? They didn't have big offensive production in that game, but Bailey played great defense. Shows you there, this is a young man with tremendous potential. No question. He had 26 in the West Final against UConn. His defense against Rutherford was outstanding. Three, way short of the mark by Stewart. Who hit one from beyond midcourt to end the half on Saturday. Jim, a one positive factor for UCLA with Edney out. Dollar is a better defender. And this team on the floor, if they can stay fresh, and I'm talking about UCLA, is a very good defensive ball club. Best differential between defensive and offensive percentage of anybody in the Pac-10. Ball on the floor, loose ball, lost by Arkansas. You're talking about a team that shoots 51%, holds their opponents to 40%. That's a differential of 11, which is huge. And there's that 2-3 zone again. Really heavy pressure on the ball. Hook shot. There it is. Old-fashioned kind of that. You saw that coming. He was in perfect balance position to take. Stewart spinning and traveling. Well, Zenick says, I have to have this in my arsenal to make up for my limited athletic ability. Well, there was the perfect hook shot move. I mean, it, it's not Kareem Jabbar, fans, but that's as good an old-time hook shot as you'll see in college basketball. Corliss Williamson back in. Jim, he comes in at 6.06. They're playing the zone, and now you have a semi-twin towers as Robinson stays in the game. Scotty Thurman in as well, and boy, oh, look Thurman, at those hands. Thurman just stripped it right away from a not-looking Henderson, and now Williamson misses the short one. Bruins everywhere, but the ball tipped out thanks to the hustle of Corliss. Back to the big man. Oh, nice job by Bailey. Look at this. It's Williamson against four Bruins. They're going to overrule the call. Sensational defensive play by Bailey against one of the best inside closer in the business. Watch Bailey come across to help out, gets his hand up, making life miserable for Corliss. It'll be UCLA basketball with the lead when we come back. Chip on CBS. At this beautiful setting. Seattle, let's reflect for a moment. The last time UCLA won the national championship. Did you know that March 31st, 75, number one song, Minnie Ripperton, Loving You, Hawaii 5-0, the number one TV show, Godfather 2, 
movie. And Billy Packer, you were broadcasting your first of now 21 Final Fours. Coach Wooden's last memorable moment in San Diego. And Jim, remember earlier on when I said Nolan Richardson has a thought to make. Do I keep pressing this UCLA team where they have that open court area to score? Do I drop back and play a little zone and trap them? He's decided to try this move. 2-3 zone, pressure on the ball, not giving UCLA that wide open court to operate in. Seen it from the corner. Thurman. There goes quick hands. O'Bannon good fake. Brilliant move. Well, his coach said he had the greatest run of five games of anybody in college basketball, and that's one of the reasons why. He's so versatile. Well, he's hit five out of six from the field. Diller gunning. Yes, three-pointer. Normally doesn't score off the dribble, but shows he has that in his arsenal, too. And he gets off the snide in Seattle. Oh, Push off. No right. ball. Didn't pass by with that one. Hook Seen shot. It. Well, he's trying to set up for it, but the Razorbacks got in the pack. Bailey to the line for a couple as Robinson hammered him. Near the conclusion of this game, we'll be selecting the Chevrolet players of the game. In conjunction with the award, Chevrolet will donate $1,000 to the general scholarship fund of each school. The Bruins bring back Charles O'Bannon. Henderson out. UCLA had a poster in its locker room all season long as we see Corey Beck come back with the two fouls. It's a poster of the Kingdome in Seattle. Took a visit here when they came up to play the University of Washington just to say, guys, it's the place you want to come back to. Toby Bailey, who will shoot one more. There's his dad, John, a UCLA graduate and a parole officer back in L.A. But Toby Bailey said he'd come in every day and look at that poster. Oh, that's Corey Beck's third, Jim. He reached in on O'Bannon. Poked him he in the eye. Yeah, he comes in the game and picks up his third. It reminds you of the Memphis game where he got in such serious foul trouble. Now, what's happening here? Edney out with injury. Beck out in foul trouble. Almost an even matchup. Second time Ed's gotten poked, Jim, yesterday. He received an award as the RCA Player of the Year. The award is a big, heavy piece of glass on marble. He held it above his head. The glass fell out, wasn't attached, came down and grazed his head. His father, a former wide receiver, caught it in midair. He said it was one of the greatest catches he's ever made in UCLA history. Well, he didn't have any reception at UCLA, so <laughs> yeah. it was his only reception in right. UCLA it history. Was the immaculate But reception. he played on the team in 1971. Right, 71. Great family here. They were all here to watch their son receive the award. And he's not disappointing them today either. Great man to man. Williamson now playing forward. That'll belong to Arkansas. And there's Bailey again. The second time, Jim, that from the weak side, this young man has made a great play. Okay. 27-24 UCLA. We haven't seen Lee Wilson to this point, Billy. I'm surprised, Jim. He's played very, very well in the tournament. Robinson, second basket of the night. Zedek posting up, now sets a little screen. Bailey in traffic. That was not a bad idea by Bailey to put it up on the glass because UCLA had the numbers inside with O'Bannon and Zedek. So just keep it up there, maybe somebody can rebound and put back. 5.49 left in the half. Beauty. Bailey with a great pass inside. And Charles O'Bannon will shoot a couple. One of the things that you have to admire about UCLA is that everybody on this team can catch the tough pass. Normally, this may be too close to fire a pass inside, but they have great hands and keep their concentration up. Brother Ed, 
used to play when they were little kids with Tyus Edney. He saw a film this week when he was seven years old. There was Edney at age nine playing with him. There's a coach that really admires what that man has done so far in this game. Great job by Zinnick playing that many minutes that productively. It's been a while, Billy, since we've seen Corliss get it inside. Diller three. Don't like that shot. Bailey coming in on the wing. Robinson clears and snaps it and picked off by Dollar. Who has settled down beautifully. O'Bannon three. He got hit on the arm, but there goes Corliss. Tipped by O'Bannon to save a possible breakaway. And they say off the fingertips to Corliss. Terrific job by Ed O'Bannon. He's the guy that got hit on the arm. But look at him hustle to get back against one of the nation's premier running big men, Corliss Williams. And they have forced Arkansas to play half court at a time. Bannon. Oh. Brother retrieves. You see, like, getting a little tired, Jim. Jim Herrick hoping he can get through these next four minutes to get to a halftime. Robinson in the game, Corliss Wilson has to play a forward defensively. Thurman. Wow. You don't see a misfire like that very often. Jim Herrick telling Dollar to slow things down. He doesn't want him to get completely out of breath. No foul, but last touch by McDaniel. Now Lee Wilson comes in. Billy, we want to send our best along to Lorenzo Romar's father, who's watching tonight on a local hospital. Had to be rushed to a hospital Saturday during the semifinal game. Aneurysm, operation Saturday night. It's been serious but stable condition. Bailey, again. Well, we saw the give and go out of those two freshmen on Saturday. They do it once again. Bailey has 10 points. As we said, Billy, he would have to be one to step up tonight. And that's off UCLA. Bruins enjoying their largest lead as they go to the under four break. Eight point advantage for UCLA, its largest lead, and the freshman has 10. Now has turned it over more. And Williamson and Thurman. Top two scores for the defending national champions, only four points. Jim, I think that Scotty Thurman is going to have to get into the offensive production. On Saturday against UNC, even though Arkansas won, Beck and Thurman were four for 19. That is not the Scotty Thurman that we know. He's got to be pivotal in the offense. He's not getting enough touches. Inbound to Remots. Wilson inside, they have to have... Wow, Wilson got an excellent position underneath. Backed him in and slam dunk for the sophomore from Waco, Texas. Jim, that backboard was broken this morning. That was almost another problem for the tournament committee. Second broken backboard of this final four. Follow-up, in and out. Dollar is staying back on defense to take away that break of Arkansas. Williamson to the line for a couple. To finish that thought, the backboard this morning during a shoot-around, snap, broke, shattered glass after a rather routine dunk by freshman backup guard Landis Williams of Arkansas. And coupled with Brian Reeves on Friday. Big countries wipe out on Friday. They're down to only two backboards in the arena. 
shooting too. Right now, we're seeing what made Arkansas, I think, the national champion last year. Nolan Richardson going with his power club. Now it's Wilson and Williamson. It gives you an entirely different look to beat. Corliss, the MOP, as they call it, most outstanding player at the Final Four last year, coming off the big game Saturday. And should he find a way to win that award tonight, he'd be the first man back-to-back -back since Bill Walton to win that award. Dollar driving, good dish, Bagley dunk. That's why they're so tough to press. In the open court, they can all handle the ball. Seven-point Bruin advantage. McDaniel, three. He's the top man for the Hawks so far with 11. Look at this. It's Wilson down here on the press. Nice job by Dollar. Retreat and then advance. Bailey. He got fouled. Run down by the other freshman. You see where Dollar is? He's all the way back at half court, Jim. He's playing like a safety man in a prevent defense in football. He's not going to let Arkansas get any easy fast breaks. Taken away by Arkansas. Under two minutes to go in the half. Timeout called by McDaniel. Looked like he might have traveled. Yeah, he he traveled before the timeout. The officials didn't see it. Well, they grant the timeout to Arkansas. 150 remaining first half, UCLA 36-32. The first fan who was there last year in Charlotte when the Razorbacks took down the Nets. Well, Jim, he may be the best political man in regard to being a fan, but the best political Democrat as far as being a Final Four man was Bill Bradley, the great senator from New Jersey. Right out He's, here. He still holds the record in two games of 87 points, was the MOP of the tournament back in 65 and scored 58 points in the consolation game. Took place in Seattle. That's something that maybe Coach Wooden will talk about because in the championship game of that tournament, Gail Goodrich had 42 against Michigan and did get the MOP of the tournament. It went to Dollar Bill, Senator Bill Bradley, a great player from Princeton. Well, Arkansas got away with a travel, but that's a timeout really did, that later in the game. A little one they may need. McDaniel, well, got a three off of it. Cuts it to one. Nice offensive set there. And Arkansas, you're exactly right, Jim. They had a turnover and end up, instead of turning over the ball, get off a good shot. Dollar comes out of the double team, but throws a soft pass that then is deflected by Dollar into Bailey's hands. Nobody back. And McDaniel ahead for an easy two and the lead. UCLA tried to convert unnecessarily when they had the numbers. Dollar's penetration left nobody back. Arkansas has come back from eight down to go up one. UCLA has to give up the ball. Switching man to man here. Oh, Bannon. Wanted the foul on top of it, didn't get the call. There's two-second differential now. Let's see if Arkansas holds for one and they want to keep this pressure up. Arkansas with its floor general on the bench with three fouls. Wilson scores, but still plenty of time for UCLA. They ought to take one shot here. Dangerous. Great passing. And J.R. Henderson gives UCLA the lead. Six seconds to go. McDaniel. Pull up three. UCLA goes to the locker room with the first half lead. That's the end of the first half with the score. The Bruins 40, the Razorbacks 39. And CBS Sports exclusive coverage of the NCAA Basketball Championship will continue after this message. And a word from your local station. CBS Sports.
sports coverage of the 1995 NCAA Men's Basketball National Championship game is sponsored by Mazda. It just feels right. UPS, moving at the speed of business. And by AT&T. CBS Sports presents Pennzoil at the Half, sponsored by Pennzoil, an official NCAA corporate partner. And a picture postcard of Mount Rainier, 75 miles away from where we are at the Dome, where UCLA leads Arkansas 40 to 39 in the national championship game. And hi again, everybody. I'm Pat O'Brien, along with Quinn Buckner and Mike Krzyzewski. And gentlemen, an intriguing first half, I would say. Well, it has been an intriguing first half, and the thing you have to be concerned about, first of all, is that are they going to wear down? Will UCLA wear down? I think their defense has been solid, but the guy, Mike, I think that's really played well has been Ed O'Bannon. I know he's been active. Yeah, most definitely. Big players step up in, for big occasions. With Eddie out, he's a player of the year who stepped forward. Let's take a look at him. He circled here, going back in defensive transition. He's playing every play. He's alert, he gets his hands on the ball and gets a steal, and he doesn't, get, he stays calm. He waits until his teammates come, and then they score off of his steal. He's doing all the, all the little things that turn up to be big things, Quinn. They didn't name Ed O'Bannon Player of the Year for nothing, right, Quinn? No, there's no doubt about it. I just, I, what I've liked about it, is when his team is needed, and where Mike is really on the mark, is I think champions step up, and he's had to step up, and he's been able to handle the ball and take the pressure off of some of his teammates. Standing by live now at Juanita's restaurant in Little Rock, Arkansas, and we don't get too often a chance to chat with the uh, number one Arkansas fan okay. of the country. Uh, good evening, Mr. President. How are you? Fine, Pat. How are you? I'm fine. Sounds like you're having a nice time uh, back there watching the game. Your thoughts, sir, uh, on the first half? I can't hear you. I'm sorry. That's okay. That happens. Your thoughts on the first half, sir? Well, I think that it's, uh, I'm glad we're just one point behind. We made a lot of unforced errors, and uh, as you were saying, UCLA had very quick hands. They uh, played great defense, and I'm, I'm looking forward to an <laughs> exciting second half. I think that our team uh, and their team, it's a, it's a wonderful game so far, but you got to give it to UCLA. They played great defense, and they got a lot of very good shots on offense, and I think that's why they're a point ahead. I know you've tried to watch a few of Arkansas's games this season. Do you have any fingernails left? The games have been such nail biters throughout the tournament. Yeah, they always give us a lot of thrills. The basketball is exciting enough on its own, but they give us a little extra every game. Uh, we, we try to have a cardiologist at every uh, watching party that we have. So this is Mr. President Quinn Buckner, did you fill out your Hi, brackets Quinn. this year? Did I what? Did you get a chance to fill out the brackets at the beginning of the tournament? No, I didn't, and I wish I had, but uh, I would have been wrong on all accounts except I expected these two teams to be in the finals. Otherwise, there were a lot of surprises along the way. Mr. President, we know you're very athletic, and uh, earlier uh, this week, on Friday, I think, you were in Haiti, and we have some film sh uh, tape of you shooting uh, buckets out there on the grass with some of our uh, good troops down there, and there you put up a bank shot. I don't know if you called her or not. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and then you shot around at... Uh, we shot around in Arkansas State with Arthur Agee uh, from the uh, documentary film Hoop Dreams. And uh, Mike Krzyzewski, who you rooted against last year, is going to go over your form. Uh, on the He's going to telestrate your form. Well, if you don't this mind, this is his chance to get even. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. President, I'm sure you're accustomed to some criticism, so I'm going to critique you. Here's Mr. President in, in the lane. He's not worried about three seconds. Good form. But he doesn't want to show that he's just an inside player. He goes outside. And now he's in, in the outside. Watch that form. Take a look at his hand and the release. It's very really good, delicate Mr. release, and he, and he puts it through. What do you think? Not bad. <laughs> what do you the think? Feet, I think the feet were on the floor. <laughs> you know, quite honestly, uh, sir, what did you take away from your visit with Arthur Agee today? Well, he's a remarkable young man, you know, and. And I, I, what I took away from it is, here's a young fellow that, that made up his mind he was going to make something of his life and try to live out his dream. He's committed to continuing his education until he gets his degree. He still wants to play pro basketball. But whatever happens to him, he's going to have a good life. And I hope that uh, Hoop Dreams and I hope that Arthur Agee both uh, serve as a kind of an inspiration to kids all across this country who are growing up in very hard circumstances. They can make it. They can be something. And I'm very grateful that he came down to Arkansas to go to college. He's a terrific young man, and I wish him well. Mr. President, I know you're also very grateful that the baseball
baseball season will begin here at the end of April. I know you followed it very closely. Would you like to throw out the first pitch uh, at the end of April? I, I sure hope that I can do that. I'm looking forward to it. And I think it's going to be good for the country to get baseball back uh, on track. I still hope they can get together and actually work out these differences. We don't need a cloud hanging over baseball for another whole season. And they ought to be able to do it. Uh, there are not that many people, and there's lots of money there. They can figure out how to divide it and, and give us the sport back. All right. Well, with the Masters coming up, Mr. President, I have to ask you, how many uh, mulligans do you get uh, when you play golf with your friends? <laughs> well, it depends, but I'm trying not to take any anymore. Okay, Maybe one you. off the first tee. <laughs> <laughs> good for you. Mr. President, thank, thank you. you. It's always a pleasure to talk hoops with you. Uh, thank you for watching. We'll see you down Thanks. the road. Thanks. Keep uh, your fingers crossed. Bye-bye. All right. Thank you, sir. Quinn, uh, what about the second half? I, I do. I worry about the fatigue factor. The one thing you've got to know is when you try to replace a player like Tyus Edney, everybody has to pick up, but the emotion that is expended when you play against an Arkansas, Arkansas team has to be a concern. Your, your team is up by one now. You're Jim Herrick. What do you say? Well, we got to watch uh, Williamson, how he did what he did Saturday coming out in the second half. I think he's going to try to assert himself, and so will Scotty Thurman. Those two guys are the guys who can lead them to, two, to their second national championship. Not too often you can criticize the President of the United States. It's a great I'm, country, yeah, I'm, right? <laughs> I'm sure he understands. Uh, 20 minutes to play here at the Kingdom. Thank you for watching Tenzoil at the half. Coming up, the second half is Jim and Billy at courtside. Enjoy the second half. We'll see you right after the game. Pennzoil at the Half was sponsored by Pennzoil, an official NCAA corporate partner. The Hoop Kingdom of the world this week. The Kingdom, Seattle. Let's go back to your report card. Check it out, Billy. What to look for, first half. MVP numbers, and you'd say, well, they're not there for Corliss Williamson, but remember what he did in the second half against UNC. 19 points and 7 rebounds. He'll get it going. Count on it. The brothers, they have been outstanding. 20 and 9. Remember, they're averaging 29 for the whole game. They're almost up to their average already. To press or not to press, this is really a dilemma for Nolan Richardson. It looks like he has a big advantage here because he's forced 12 turnovers. But by pressing, he allows UCLA to get in the open court game where they score so well. And the bench, without any question, the big advantage once again for Arkansas. 13 to 2. Amazing. This has been what's been critical in the tournament for him all year. Billy, Corliss Williamson has five points at halftime. Scotty Thurman played 17 minutes and did not make a shot from the field. He was 0 for 3. Yeah, you can see it right there, Jim. Not only the fact that they have not had big production, they're not touching the ball enough. That's something I'm sure Nolan Richardson's going to work on just as he did Saturday. Second half straight ahead. UCLA 40, Arkansas 39, and we'll return to Seattle after this message and a word from your local station. Has 15 for the Bruins. McDaniel 16 for Arkansas as we get set for the second half. And Billy, this position for Arkansas is nothing new in this tournament. It really isn't. And one of the reasons why you like to come from behind, because it gives you confidence no matter where you are. You can see the fact that they've been behind in the second half in every game in the tournament. So this is a confident club, even in that position. Let's get a report quickly from Michelle Tafoya. Michelle? All right, Jim. Well, the word out of the UCLA locker, UCLA locker room, the coaching staff has told me that Tyus said his status will not change at all for the second half. He can't put the ball on the floor. He can't shoot. As far as we know right now, he will not play in the second half. Jim, Billy. You know, Billy, you look at the starting guards for Arkansas, Corey Beck and Clint McDaniel. McDaniel having a big scoring night with 16, but the two of them did not have a single assist in the first half. And Beck, for as great a floor general as he is, and Richardson calls him his most outstanding player. It's really surprising. He allows himself to continually get in foul trouble in the first half. Well, remember, Jimmy came in with two fouls and had that reach-in foul before he actually played one second of time his last time on the floor. Ruins 22-1 and one when leading at halftime. But that's part of the reason why so many of the Arkansas games come down to the last seconds. There's Wilson inside. Gets a starting assignment. The real key for Arkansas gets Scotty Thurman off the snide here in the second half, early. O'Bannon. Zedek. Very nice putback. How is that possible? Nolan Richardson has his twin towers in there, and he got overpowered. Let's 
give Bailey some credit for the fact that Thurman hasn't gotten off many shots. Lee Wilson with position. He'll go to the line for a couple. Ed O'Bannon. That's his second. Jim, one of the reasons Arkansas is here is so many guys have come off the bench and been productive. And this guy, maybe more than any in that Syracuse game, with Williamson out with fouls, he was the guy. 18 points, five rebounds. was just a tower of strength against Jim Beheim's club. You know, Nolan Richardson says that for two years, Lee Wilson has had to go against Corliss in practice. Corliss, he says, used to dominate him, but no more. 51% free throw shooter, but during the NCAA tournament, he's lifted that greatly, up around almost 70. There's that 2-2-1 two -two press again. Nolan having to make some tough decisions here as to how he wants to work defensively. Oh, no look pass from Cameron Dollar. Uh, Dollar threw a body block on Wilson in addition to that and cleaned him out. So he not only gets the assist, but he throws the block. Wilson. Well, they just shot a free throw from there. Isn't it amazing how they can get such productivity off this bench? Here's the, the thing, two, and you two, never one. know which guy it's going yeah. to be either. You know, every night it's someone new. Zedek, what well, they say, last touch by Thurman. Yeah, let's see it right here. Yeah. here. Dollar will pass. Now he blocks, <laughs> knocks Wilson right out of uh, out of the out of sideline. Easy layup. Now back to the 2-3 zone. They have to play this because otherwise O'Bannon would be on Williamson from the outside. Scotty Thurman, Arkansas looking to run here. McDaniel on the wing. And Charles O'Bannon says, I got the numbers. Jim, Damon Stoudemire was co-MVP of the Pac-10, but one of the things he said, and I think he's a very smart basketball player, against UCLA, you got to keep people back. <laughs> and here they come again. Charles ahead. Brother to brother and deflected by Beck. I've read a lot of Stoudemire's comments, and I think he's probably the best student of the game that I've heard about in college basketball, but he's absolutely correct. You better have a safety man. <laughs> Foul before the shot. Stoudemire didn't miss many games this year that were broadcast. He's prides himself on <laughs> watching them all. Yep. First on Williamson. Now, Jim, one of the things we need to keep looking at all the time is the fatigue factor. That's what Nolan Richardson counts on for the big run in the second half. Look at Bailey climb up for that rebound. One more time, and the freshman on the third chance gets it to go. The second put back for UCLA in this half, and Nolan has his power team on the floor. Scotty Thurman cannot get away from Charles O'Bannon. Toby Bailey, the freshman. One shot. Two shots. Three shots. How about that? He was the one who, when they had that poster in the locker room, said all season long he would daydream about what it would be like if they got to the kingdom and played in front of 40,000. Away from the ball, the foul on Wilson. Not a smart foul there. Zedek, no problem on that part of the floor. You see here, he's fighting him when his man isn't yet a threat. You have to move your feet, not grab with your hands. And Wilson is gonna be coming out, Stewart coming in. Zedek, two. Oh, a collision. You're not gonna win that one when you collide with Corliss. Bailey picks up the foul, his first. You know, a lot of times, the foul would have been called on Corliss because he knocked the other man to the floor, but that was uh, well officiated there because Bailey is the guy that initiated the contact. UCLA guys bending over, grabbing their pants, Jim. This is awful early in the second half to be doing that. Thurman three, there you go. 
First bucket of the night for Thurman. Now on McDaniel. Dauber to the line. Again, this press will force some turnovers for UCLA, but look at how well they convert in the open court. And I'm sure in the days between Saturday and tonight, Nolan Richardson thought many times about what's the best way to play this team. And that was with Edney in the game. First point for Dollar, who was saying before the game that he felt Arkansas's pressure presented some of the problems they faced this year against Arizona State. Key against their pressure is going to be handling the ball and not having many turnovers. How do you think he's done against the press? I think he's done very well, but even more importantly, he's been so solid on defense. UCLA goes in the 2-3 zone. Watch out for Scotty Thurman. Remember how flat they played this zone the other day? They change it this time now that they've got a different type of team. Steal by the Bruins. There was only, only one outside shooter for Oak State. Now there's more, so they don't flatten down. Great pass by Dollar. Oh, comes out of there with a and one. Wow. Jim, I have not seen a college team able to throw such line drive quick passes on the interior as UCLA. They have great hands on the inside. And it really takes away the defense. And now he's in the game. Watch these passes. They are so hard. And again, UCLA going to the offensive glass for the third time in this half. Eddie O'Bannon with a three-point play. Bannon has moved past Tracy Murray and Trevor Wilson tonight to fourth all-time score at UCLA. Behind McLean, Alcindor, and Reggie Miller. Corliss in the paint. Nice job by Zidick. Look at this pass. The pass. Talk about a bullet. Double-digit lead for the Bruins. Nolan not going for the timeout, trying to wait for the TV timeout. But that bullet pass is amazing how they can throw it. Thurman. Stewart. O'Bannon reached in. Jim, this is the first time I've seen the Arkansas players kind of confused a little bit. Look at that fire. Our, our director, Bob Fishman, one of his great heroes is Sandy That's Koufax. Right. I don't know if Koufax could throw any better strike than that one. Had the love of that effort by the Dwight southpaw. Stewart. And now Dwight Stewart. What's so tough on that kind of pass is you normally have some English that makes it tough to catch, but that was on the money. Oh, Sandy's <laughs> talking about it right now. How did he do that? He said, I had a high hard one. That one was a low hard one. He also had a pretty good curveball, but that's not what you wanted to throw on that pass. So, missing the second one, they don't get the under 16 minute timeout. Maybe on the next whistle. Alex Dillard has checked into the Arkansas lineup along with Darnell Robinson. That's a little give and go, but. Ed O'Bannon, O'Bannon can take Stewart, Jim, on the dribble. Zedek going after the loose ball, pushes Beck to the floor, no call. Now we have a timeout. Corliss Williamson, by the way, hasn't scored in over 20 minutes of action. Bruins by nine. I don't know if it was a superstition, but on Saturday, when John Wooden was watching UCLA on television, he was in St. Louis for the McDonald's High School All-America game. The Bruins were leading Oak State by one with 2.40 to go. Then he reached down, took out a baseball cap with UCLA on it, and they scored the last 12 points. I'm really disappointed in Coach. He doesn't have that little program rolled up like he always used to carry with him. Let's send him one. Shot clock. Down to two, 
They don't realize it. Not in time. Not in time. Jim, how many times have we seen that this year? Teams not realizing they don't have the full complement of seconds. Not a coaching breakdown, but you're just not used to having to get it off that quick. And that's the first turnover of the half for UCLA. Stewart bangs it home. Two-pointer. Nice move by Nolan Richardson. Put what put put Stewart right in the center of that 2-3 zone where he can step out and shoot that jumper. Very good use of the half of the timeout. Oh, Bannon will challenge Stewart. Nope, he'll get double team and have it taken away by Beck. Beck in traffic to McDaniel. On the wing, a three. Look at Beck, second leading rebounder from the guard position this year. Swinging around to the three-point giant. He's amazing. Here comes Arkansas, 55-51 UCLA. Dillard, gotta be a foul. Hey, he fouled him twice before that. Here's a push, here's another push. And then the third one was a trip. And Jim Herrick's letting the official know it, too. Good job on his part. Stand up, keep those guys alert. Ed O'Bannon, three-pointer. Cedic. Look at this. Boy, the big man from Prague is really battling inside. Now we talked about it earlier. Jim, he was looking to go home when he was so unproductive in his first two years at UCLA on the court, not in the classroom. He has been an All-American academically. But uh, Tyus Edney convinced him to stay, and he has been a very important factor for this team. Changed his name to Yuri, from Yuri to George, and actually wasn't recruited by UCLA until Cherokee Parks decided to sign with Duke. And late, Bruins signs Zedek. Knocks down two free throws, six-point UCLA lead. I don't see the fatigue factor yet, Jim. They're hanging in there pretty well. And Corliss Williamson still rests. Williamson last scored with 16 minutes to go in the first half. That's that confidence that Nolan has in that bench. He's got nerves to steal, I'll tell you that. You'd think you'd want that man in there. Yeah, you'd think your leading score's gone 24 minutes without a point. Stewart, though, starting to do it up. Too strong with that one. Got a chance with the numbers again. Charles O'Bannon, dollar with the assist. You cannot afford to attack the basket with five men against UCLA because they can get out and run. Bad shot. Robinson. We've seen him take that before. And there they go again. Get the numbers. They're so quick. They all can catch it on the run. Jim, that shot reminded me of the first half and when Arkansas played the other day and took 22 threes by the wrong people at the wrong time and found themselves behind against North Carolina. Zedek again. We'll shoot two. Well, we talked about John Wooden's first national championship in 64 when Kenny Washington came to the front with the 26 points. This young man will go in history as well if he steps in and continues to play the way he is tonight for Tyus Edney because Cameron Dollar has been outstanding. Robinson out with three. Corliss Williamson into the game. They're in now a one-on-one -on -one situation already. UCLA, but this is a two-shot situation. Cameron Dollar. He is tired. He'll get a blow. Replaced by J.R. Henderson. Now, let's think about what they're going to do. They really don't have a point guard on the floor. Does that mean that Bailey goes back there and Ed O'Bannon brings it up? Yeah. Nolan Richardson will go right after this team. There is not the traditional point guard, either number one or two on the floor for UCLA. UCLA hitting its free throws like it did on Saturday. Nine in a row for the Bruins. That puts Henderson on a guard defensively. Bruins have matched their largest lead back to 10 and a reach-in on Zedek. 
Only the fourth team foul for UCLA. UCLA foul charge number 25, George Zidick, his second team score. A little more than 12 minutes remaining at the Kingdom. 61-51, now cut to eight. Let's see the press now, Jim. How do they get the ball up the court against this team? They don't have a guard out there. Nice. Bailey looks around, pull up, perfect. Brilliant play. He knew McDaniel was coming behind him. He let him go by. Missed his last seven shots. Here they come again with the numbers. Stolen by Corliss. Bailey takes it away again. <laughs> Bailey, second effort. <laughs> this freshman, Jim, has been truly outstanding in this tournament. Great defense on Saturday, defense and offense today. Let him finish. We've seen this a couple of times too, where Bailey retrieves his own miss. Jim, this is the fourth offensive putback in this half for UCLA off the offensive glass against Arkansas. That's amazing. Cameron Dollar got a short break and now is back. Jim, remember when Jim Herrick was talking to us about lessons he learned from Mike Shishovsky in regard to Bob Hurley? It looks like he's doing that with Dollar, right? Well, he was talking about taking Edney out late in the first half against Michigan in a second round game two years ago. Had a 19 point lead just before the half, gave Edney a break and then went in the locker room up only 13. He said he kicked himself. He felt that switched the momentum around. He learned then later watching Hurley go the distance. Boy, it's so important to make that foul because it allows you to put your press on. They got it anyway. And a foul on Bailey on the arm. His third. Foul number 12, Kobe Bailey, his third, team six. 10.58 remaining. UCLA by 11. Coverage of the 1995 NCAA Men's Basketball National Championship game is sponsored by Oldsmobile, the official car of the NCAA Championships. Mountain Dew with a subtle reminder to do the do. And by Goodyear, number one in tires. Well, folks, we have 11 minutes remaining. And Arkansas is down 11. How do they get a flurry going here, Billy Pack? Well, I like Nolan Richardson's genius for using his bench, Jim. And right now we see out on the floor the starting five. And I'm not talking about Martin. I'm talking about the starting five as he knows it. This is going to be the next two minutes are going to be the key for Arkansas to make their move. Because I'll tell you what's happening right now. UCLA will get over that fatigue factor in the fact that you just say, hey, this is the one we got to win. This is the national championship. You get so much adrenaline going, adrenaline going you can overcome it. And Arkansas will start to get some doubts of can they pull it back. Check. Well, that starts it. Way to come out of a timeout. And the Razorbacks were saying all weekend, we know we've been having to play from behind throughout the tournament, but we always feel like no matter what the deficit is, we're going to find a way to get it there. Get it back and win. A little bit different defensive look. Ed O'Bannon had a good look at that tip. Well, and Charles had an easy shot. We see the 2-3 zone. That's Scotty Thurman hiding out in the corner. Nice pass. McDaniel. Ed O'Bannon has 10 rebounds. How about the decision making he made there? Instead of throwing it long, he wants to slow it down a little bit. Make sure they conserve some energy. And they can do that against the zone. Henderson, loose ball to McDaniel. Two straight times down four without converting. Stewart, too long. But Williamson with position. No call, but back to back. Thurman. Now, now, you know what? 
You heard Ed O'Banion say, hold it to his brother, meaning they don't want to run. Maybe Jim Herrick has said right now, I want to slow down the pace to conserve energy. Nice piece of coaching by Herrick. But you can't get too conservative too early, Jim. Two-point shot. Long rebound to Scotty. 65-56 UCLA. Three straight times down floor without a score for UCLA. You can't go into those droughts like North Carolina did. Over 12 minutes without a field goal. Well, there hasn't been a whistle since out of that timeout. We're two minutes into it. Bruins haven't scored out of the timeout. Arkansas with four now. Jim Herrick has got to feel this a little bit himself. He changed the strategy in regard to the attack mode. He can't allow too big a run here. 8.30 remaining, down to seven. Bruins led by as many as 12. Out to Dollar for a three. Saved underneath. Arkansas slips and steps on the line. UCLA ball. There's that number two rebounder. We had two teams in the final four where their guard was the number two rebounder. Rutherford from Oklahoma State and Vex for Arkansas. Very unusual. UCLA scoreless for three minutes. Looks like Jim Herrick's trying to steal about two, three minutes here. Ed O'Bannon gets it right back. Boy, he goes up high. That, that was a huge basket. 20 and 11 for Ed O'Bannon. Stewart turnaround. Counter. Well, you see a much fresher team on the floor now. Look at UCLA starting to walk up the court, Jim. Exception of McDaniel, the UCLA starters have played about half as many minutes as have the UCLA starters. Stewart got a piece of the arm of Zedek. That will send Zedek to the line for a one and one. Bill, you mentioned Zedek, an academic All-America, 3.77 GPA in his career, including 3.9 in the fall to make the Dean's list. And the son of a very famous quarterback in his homeland. His father was the leading scorer in the European Championships back in 1970. So he had a big miss there on the front end. Yep, now an outstanding coach, obviously. Morales challenging Zedek. No, back to back for a three. Beck has really shot the three in this tournament. Great teamwork. Shows the unselfish nature of Corliss Williamson to throw that ball back out. Razorbacks. Get it back. And Scotty Thurman raises his fist, saying this is it. It's the under eight timeout. The Razorbacks are showing signs of another comeback. Chip on CBS. Look at the second chance points tonight. UCLA with 25 to only six for Arkansas. Jim, those off the glass offensive putbacks in this half have been amazing, but now you're talking about a little bit tired team in terms of tired legs. The family of Tyus Edney, mother Barbara on the left, brother Russell, father Hank. And a young man whose stomach probably turning in knots right now, wishing he could be out there. Tough break. Got it out, tried to go, couldn't use the right hand at all. Nice movement. They're looking for Carlos Williamson on every timeout. Nolan has set up an excellent offensive half-court play. Williamson can't shoot over Zidic. Never seen him have problems nope. like this nope, he inside. Not, he had not been able to shoot it over him. Corliss, two out of 13 from the field. UCLA this year, 24-0 when they hold opponents under 80. Beck strips it away. He's 
looking around, and there's the three. And the man they want shooting it. Oh, Thurman rattles it out. Jim, I, I Look think at you, Dollar breaking through. They got to go on the attack side. UCLA had the bodies underneath, but they mistimed it. Now Corla straight ahead. Still can't get one. That was Williamson. Challenged by O'Bannon. O'Bannon. Late getting up the floor to tie his shoe. Big break for Ed O'Bannon. His shoelaces are untied. Here you see McDaniel moving those feet. Referee said he didn't get there in time. That is the third on McDaniel, the ninth on Arkansas. So this is the last one-on-one -on -one situation of the night for UCLA. Jim, you were talking about those second chance points. I don't know, I, I wasn't able to research every team that's ever won a national championship, but I'm willing to put this one on the line. Arkansas, if they were to win, I think would be the first team ever to be out-rebounded by their opponents on the season, which is hard to believe you could be potentially a national championship and have that kind of stat. Tonight, they're getting out-rebounded, as usual. Zedek was beaten to the spot by Corliss and then commits the foul. That is the seventh on UCLA, so they'll shoot a one and one. Boy, he moves to the ball so well. That time he came all the way across the lane. Missed his last 11 shots, which is very, very unusual. 64% shooter in NCAA tournament play. Of course, the all-time leader is Bill Walton in regard to shooting percentage for a career in the tournament. That was capped off by his 21 out of 22 against Memphis State. Big one and one now, 522 remaining. There's Corliss's dad and his brother. His dad and mom drove up to see him after that terrible loss to Alabama at home by 18. His father set him straight. He said, be a man the rest of the year. And he has been. Double team on Dollar. O'Bannon over Thurman. And the mismatch. Oh, and they took advantage. Great job by Dollar splitting the double team. Under five remaining for the national championship. And watch Williamson come into the ball, Jim. Stewart stuck. Dillard in range. <laughs> yeah. Anywhere inside the midcourt strike. Williamson on the drive. Hacked by. Well, they like call it on Dollar, his third. Jim, you talked earlier about Corliss could be the first guy to, who had back-to-back -back MOP since Walton. There were others. Alcindor won all three years. Lucas won in 60 and 61. Rosen, 48 and 49. And Bob Curlin from Oak State was the first back-to-back -back MOP winner. He won in 45 and 46. One and one. Oh, that's it. They called it actually, I guess, on the shot. I saw the first indication was on the drive. So one more. Part of the continuation of was he in the act of the shot. Only three of seven at the line, now 50%. Four-point UCLA lead. O'Bannon, pull off. Picked up and dunked by Bailey. Jimmy elevated to another height, didn't he? He went up halfway and then kept right on going. You're looking at a future star there. I think the future is now. Oh, yeah. You see, Dollar makes the block. It hits the back of the board. Now, here's what I'm talking about. Watch him elevate and then just keep going up higher. Boom. Tremendous think, uh, play. That's think, the fifth offensive putback of this half. I think a local company here named... Boeing might be interested in talking to Bailey <laughs> about how you get up so fast. Airborne. Tremendous. Dillard for McDaniel. 
4.14 on the game clock. Uh, he was fading away on that jump. Did not go towards the basket. Reach in. Two shots the rest of the way for UCLA. What's happening right now, Jim? Arkansas made their move as we anticipated. Now they have to start looking at that clock a little bit. Let's see how confident they are. Jim Herrick is doing something very smart here. Even though he slowed the pace down, they take the attack mode whenever they have the numbers. And I think that's very smart to pick up some cheap baskets. Donald looking on as father coached him in high school back in Atlanta. Made seven of eight free throws against Oak State. In the lane. <laughs> Nothing like the emotion of a parent. Must be some thrill. Lead is back to eight. Berman coming through. With Stewart over the back. Yes, sir. UCLA is now picking up confidence, and the adrenaline is flowing. Now, look at this huddle by Arkansas. First time they have to start questioning themselves a little bit. Great elevation on the defensive glass by O'Bannon Stewart over the top. And it was Corey Beck who brought them together for that summit. And McDaniel in for Dillard. Ed O'Bannon will shoot two. This Arkansas team in the 90s have won more games than any team in college basketball. They've got 174 wins, followed by Kansas 165, North Carolina 162, and Duke 160. So they have been outstanding. Ed, Sr., and Madeline O'Bannon. Able to smile as they look at the clock. 354. And the two freebies brings it back to 10. The teams head to the benches for the last official timeout. UCLA, 10 points in front. What a night this man is having. It's been a long journey to this championship game and 354 away from winning the title for Jim Herrick and his high school sweetheart, wife Sally. Their journey from Charleston, West Virginia to California without a job and made it through the high school ranks, through the assistant ranks in college, to Pepperdine as a head coach, and now in his seventh season at UCLA. Ed O'Bannon makes the steal. UCLA possession with 3.30 remaining, up 10. And Zidick playing against Williamson on the outside, created that. Bailey steps in, and the freshman unflappable. 24 for Bailey. Never. Stop the shot again. Push off by Dollar. And for Dollar, this becomes a concern. Four, four personal fouls on Cameron Dollar. Let's see if Jim Herrick tries to steal a little time with him because you want him in the, the game for the last minute. Jim, see if he tries to go back with Henderson so that he can have Dollar on the floor for the last minute. Corey Beck shooting one and one for Beck. Arkansas has gone over four minutes without a field goal. And he's still rubbing the right wrist. And Jim, it will be a free throw shooting contest. And remember on Saturday, UCLA made 10 of 10 in the last minute of 32. And overall, it's last 14. Fake by Bailey, and now UCLA will pull it out. Dollar's got to be careful now also on the drive. He doesn't want to pick up an offensive charge. 
Phoenix. McDaniel whistled for his fourth. Jim, you can't say enough about the way UCLA has paced this game in the last 10 minutes. Arkansas gave him the shot when Jim Herrick figured, well, we need to slow it down some to save some energy. And now they go back on the attack. Brilliant strategy. And all these little minutes of substituting people help UCLA because it gives them almost like a timeout rest. Remots who can hit a three. 74% free throw shooter. Well, he's learned a little English. <laughs> For those of you who heard that remark. I said, get a free throw shooting contest. Two and a half to go. Williamson gets a field goal at last. His first since 16 minutes to go in the first half. They got it under 10 also. Here's where Jim Herrick has to work the referees a little bit in regard to fouling, Jim, because Arkansas will come out now and try to double team a lot. There's an example. Stewart. Sending Ed O'Bannon to the line. See, they're going to come out and really go after people with double teams. So you got to work those referees and make them call the quick whistle. Only two minutes and three seconds remaining. Ed O'Bannon shooting two. Talk about leadership. After UCLA was humiliated last year in the first round of Tulsa. Ed O'Bannon held a little meeting in the locker room after the game and told them that coming back for his last year, he wouldn't allow that to happen again. And it wasn't like he played poorly against Tulsa. He had a 31-point game, so it really wasn't all his doing. Diller. Banks it home. Cuts it to eight. Diller to hit a big three in the overtime against Syracuse. Bailey left alone. Bailey continues to soar. Well, Jim, Purvis Ellison won the MOP as a freshman. <laughs> don't, don't discount this young man. Stewart. Not a good shot. Beck, what a try at that save, but doesn't get it. Ten-point lead, UCLA ball with 1.25 to go. Stewart was off balance, Jim, for that three. Timeout called by UCLA. One twenty-five remaining in the game. UCLA 81-71, each team with two timeouts. It was Herrick who called that timeout. And during that break, John Wooden got up from his seat and headed out. Now, coaches had some problems with the hip. They go long. Charles! Corey Beck, three-pointer. He's hit eight out of ten in the tournament from three. And Ed O'Bannon will go to the line. How about finishing the thought about John Wooden? Well, I think, Jim, one of the things that Coach Wooden is known for is his pyramid of success. And it's a number of levels of success, but he talks about conditioning, skill, team spirit, poise, confidence, and then at the top of the pyramid is competitive greatness. And what we are seeing tonight, a team that entered this floor without their leader, without the guy that we all thought would be so critical to the game, without him, no chance. Competitive greatness at the top of that pyramid of success is what's brought this team on. Nick Daniel fouling out, ending his career. The senior had 16 tonight, all of them in the first half. O'Bannon will have two. Jim Herrick says about Wooden, I love the guy. He's the wisest man I've ever known. And he taught me so much, hundreds of things. But the one thing 
He told me, is if I listened to too much criticism, it would hurt my coaching. And if I listened to too much praise, it would hurt my coaching. There you can see Nolan obviously more than just concerned. Beck again. Beck slaps it out to Dillard. 11-point UCLA lead with a minute remaining. Stolen by Dollar. Stewart. 42 seconds to go. And there will be a no Arkansas comeback, it appears, this time. Well, they dodged it game after game. It is so tough to repeat. And just think that UCLA did it seven times. Not until David Thompson and company came up in 74 did they stop that rush of John Wooden's great ball, ball clubs. Throw one out to you, Jim. In 1962, which was Wooden's first year into the Final Four, he played our alma mater, Wake Forest, in the consolation game. And you played he, in that game. He never lost a Final Four game from 62 to 1974. North Carolina State. North Carolina State. Overtime. Yep. In Greensboro. And Jim Herrick has coached a brilliant game tonight. That was your question, wasn't it? Yep. You were all over it. NC State. Matter of fact, that broke the string of Bill Walton's back-to-back-to-back uh, -to -back -to -back MOPs because David Thompson was the man. It's actually double overtime that game. Corey Beck comes out, ending his career. Forma still hustling. Both O'Bannon brothers with a dunk in the last minute to bring the lead to 13 and Reed Potts. And Jim, that play personified what this game was all about. UCLA in the open court. If you press them, they're such good passers and finishers. You may get some turnovers, but they can convert. This is what team play is all about. There was a wizard in the stands and some magic on the floor. Jim Herrick and UCLA can hang a banner in Westwood. is here, plus the Oscar nominee, Miranda Richardson. Join me, Tom, on the next Late Late Show. Well, silence the critics. UCLA has won the national championship for the 11th time in school history. And Jim Herrick, a magical night for your team, and you had to do it without the guy who got you here. I think he had the best tournament of any player of the 64 teams up till tonight. But what a gutty performance by the rest of our guys. I, I'm so proud of them. They just sucked it up and played hard and and uh, ran everything we wanted and guarded the three. And, and it was a great question. 
when did you know, first of all, he was in trouble, and then when did you know you were going to have to take him out of the game and, and sit him? Well, when, right before he warmed up, I knew we couldn't play. I'd started him, but I knew he couldn't play. Tyus, how tough was that to sit over there knowing guys like Eddie were going to have to carry the load? Uh, it, was, it, was, it was a bad feeling to know that I couldn't play in this game, but I have confidence in my guys. They played without me before. I knew they could do it. Ed really stepped up. Everybody, all of them, Cam, all the freshmen, everyone really just stepped up. And when I saw them playing as hard as they were, I knew we weren't, we weren't going to have a problem. Great job getting them here. They carried you the rest of the way. No question. Billy, we have, we have uh, Ed O'Bannon over here closing out a college career tonight and you guys had to do it without Tyus what was it like for you guys tonight coming into this one without your floor general uh, well we stay positive the whole time you know uh, we put everything in God's hands uh, we walk by faith not by sight that's 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 how it is that's what that's the law we've been doing that the whole year and uh, everybody stayed together Tyus was behind us he brought us here MVP goes to Tyus Edmonds. Tyus is the man. Throw it up. Eddie, congratulations, Charles. Hey, Cameron, get in here. How about how about this night for you? That I was able to play and perform like I did. Um, I owe a lot to Tyus. The two years that he's been with me, he taught me a lot, and I was able to apply today. Big Yuri, George. Tyus was your roommate when you came to school. You guys tonight really shut down Corliss Williamson like we had never seen before. How did you do it? Well, I just played. I played him as tough as I could, and I tried to move my feet, and I did it. I don't even know how I did it, but I shot him down. We play hard. We play hard, and we show everybody that we got hard. That's right, baby. We proved all the critics wrong. That's right. We showed them what the West, Bas West Coast basketball is all about. And we are the best conditioned team in the nation. Well, there's some, there's some nets waiting for you. Go tear down the nets. UCLA has won a national championship. I know you love this night, Billy. It was great being here with you. Pat O'Brien will be coming up when we continue from the Kingdom after this message and a word from your local station. The championship game when they were all worried about Tyus Edney, Ed O'Bannon grabbed his crew together outside the locker room and said, fellas, it's only a pickup game. And for their efforts tonight, they're about to pick up a national championship trophy. Let's go down to the voice of the Final Four and Frank Ballard. Your attention, please. Now to present the championship awards tonight, here's the chairman of the NCAA Division I Men's Basketball Committee, Mr. Bob Frederick. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of the NCAA Division I Men's Basketball Committee, I'd like to congratulate both teams on an outstanding effort tonight and throughout the tournament. It's my pleasure at this time to present the national championship trophy to coach Jim Herrick and the UCLA Bruins. athletes that I've ever been associated with. They're students, they're great, great people, and they're fine athletes. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of the NCAA, we thank you for your support of NCAA basketball. What are we doing? You might want to call them the new Wizards of Westwood. They figured out a way to get it done tonight with their catalyst. And Ed O'Bannon led the crowd. We'll be back with Mike Krzyzewski and Quinn Buckner, and we'll hear from Nolan Richardson right after this. Let's thank Seattle right now for being glorious hosts this week. Coming up next, local news, except on the West Coast, and then the Late Show with David Letterman followed by the Late Late Show with Tom Snyder. So UCLA wins its 11th championship, beating the Hogs of Arkansas 89 to 78. And our Chevrolet most valuable players of the game for Arkansas, Corey Beck with 11 points, two assists, three bounds. For UCLA,
Guess who, folks? Ed O'Bannon, 30 points, 16 rebounds. And how many Ed O'Bannons were on the floor tonight? You think? Well, it looked like he was all over the place. But I've got to say, when you talk about champions, one of the things that has to be there is heart. There was great character on the part of UCLA Bruins. They had an out. When Ty Sedney was not a part of that team, they deserved to win this game. You know, the, not the joke, but the talk has always been, well, you, UCLA coach wins this one, and now they say, well, win me nine more. Do you think the monkey is off Herrick's back for, for Well, there should have never been a monkey on his back, Pat. Uh, Jim Herrick showed throughout the, not just this tournament, but the whole season what an excellent coach he is. To lose Edney going into this championship game, their team had a chance to rationalize and say, well, we've come this far, now we have an excuse. Right. I think the leader of that team was Jim Herrick, and he never let them rationalize. And the leader of the Arkansas Razorbacks, who got his respect last year and had it all this season, what a great season they had. After the game, Michelle Tafoya caught up with Nolan Richardson. All right, Coach, not the interview you wanted to be doing tonight. What happened? Well, uh, you know, UCLA played a great ball game. Uh, uh, I think all their kids played exceptionally well. Uh, uh, we were not uh, an effective in the half court. Uh, they did a great job on Corliss. Uh, we didn't shoot the ball outside as well, so uh, you've got to congratulate uh, Coach Herrick and his ball club. They just played lights out. You will be losing six seniors after tonight. What can you say about them? Well, I tell you, I'm very proud of our kids, and I told them that prior to the game. I said, just being here, uh, after all the pressure you guys has gone through, I mean, it, we might be able to escape one more time, but uh, uh, you've got to remember that this is one of the finest seasons uh, that I've ever been around with guys that had to work so hard, and I, I'm very proud of that bunch. Congratulations on a great season, Coach. Thank you. Thank you very much. If you really think about it, there is nothing wrong with being number two. Back with one shining moment after this. An 11th banner in Pauley Pavilion when the season begins next year as UCLA beats Arkansas 89-78. to and a reminder that our CBS sports coverage of the Masters begins with highlight shows at 11.35 Eastern Time on Thursday and Friday nights. Then we'll have live full coverage from Augusta, the Augusta National, on Saturday at 3.30 Eastern and Sunday at 4 Eastern. The Masters on CBS. It's a tradition unlike any other. And our final thoughts on the tournament here, Quinn, for what a tournament, huh? It was a great tournament. I got to say this for you, UCLA. Number 11 is ironic because that's Tyus Edney's number. They did it without him, but they wouldn't have got here without that player. This was a great tournament and a great ending for the 1995 basketball season. Quinn, it's been great working with you this couple of weeks. Had a lot of fun. Coach, it's always great to have you on the set. You going to be here next year? Yeah, I'm going to be here. I, after being, especially working with you guys, it gives me incentive to go back to coaching. <laughs> <laughs> oh, are you happy to leave us? Yes, I yes, am. Yes, I am. <laughs> you know, after, thank you guys, after 63 games, including uh, tonight's battle of college basketball heavyweights, we have a winner and a new champion, the UCLA Bruins. And as we offer our congratulations to Coach Jim Herrick and his players and fans, we also want to offer our thanks to the many folks who labor long and hard to bring you March Madness. And in keeping with our CBS Sports tradition, here now is one last look back, set to what has become our tournament anthem, one shining moment. Teddy Pendergrass does the honors. It's been a great couple of weeks. Good night, everybody. <laughs>